In this video, I'm going to show you my technique to ice cakes in a dark colored buttercream. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you want to learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I'd love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. So dark buttercream icing with the method that I use in the hot bench scraper, a lot of people have been asking, and I know I say a lot of people have been asking me, but seriously, when a lot of people start asking me the same thing, that's when I know I need to film a video. <laughs> and people have been asking me, how do you smooth the buttercream and not discolor it when you're using a hot piece of metal against it? And I have a little, I have a technique. Uh, it just works for me and I just want to show you what works for me and hopefully it'll work for you. And before we get started, I just want to say I just hit 20,000 subscribers and thank you so much for your support. You guys have been so, uh, I say this every time that you guys have been so awesome, but I'm really learning so much from you and I love interacting with you guys and seeing the pictures of the cakes that you create using my techniques. So I can't thank you enough for your support and I look forward to making many more videos for you. So let's get into the video. All right, to do this, I have a pot of water. So it's like a medium high heat that it's on right now. So it's not gonna come to a boil, but the water's gonna be hot. I have a turntable. I, I got this years ago on um, eBay. I have no clue where to find something like this, but you could use any turntable. And I like to put a piece of non-skid pad on top. That way the cake won't slide around. I have a bench scraper. You want to make sure that you have a bench scraper that doesn't have a handle um, that sticks out on the sides. That way it can, it can be flush with the cake board. I will link this below. And to start, I'm going to use my American buttercream. I always frost my cakes with American buttercream. It's just the buttercream that I prefer to use. I've never used Swiss meringue or any kind of meringue buttercream, anything else other than American buttercream. So this is strictly for American buttercream. And this is a big bowl of it. I just, I just made a video on how I make this big bowl of icing and I will link that and the recipe and everything will be in that video. And I'll also have a recipe later in this video. I feel like I, all I keep saying is I have videos, I have videos because I, I can't have all of my videos be so long. I try to show you parts <laughs> here and there. So this is a red velvet cake that I have a video <laughs> on how I make the red velvet cake with the cream cheese filling. All videos will be linked in the description. So this was filled about two hours ago. You don't want anything with cream cheese icing to sit out more than two hours. And I'll also link the video on how I fill cakes, which I actually need to update because it's an old video and I could make it so much better now. But anyway, as you can see, when I fill my cakes, I don't have, like, they're not perfect, right? Like I don't pipe the stiffened dam and I just, I just put the icing in between. So when you do it like this, you run the risk of getting the icing bulges, which is when you ice the cake, you'll see the icing bulging out of each layer. This technique is going to help prevent that from happening. What I like to do is crumb coat the cake with the white icing. What I'm doing, I have some icing on this angled spatula. I prefer an offset spatula. Put it against the cake. Now I'm pressing the icing down. I'm not lifting it off. I'm pressing it against the cake, making sure no air pockets are forming behind here. So I don't want to just slap it on. I want to carefully push it to the side. So if you are icing a cake and you do this and then you lift this off and then put it back down, you're going to get crumbs. So I'm pressing it down and I'm pushing it around the cake. All right, so as I'm doing this, I'm making sure that I'm holding the spatula straight up and down. It's not on an angle. I want the icing to be the same thickness around the whole cake, right? So if it was coming out at the top, it's gonna to be thicker at the top than at the bottom. So now I did one layer, I'm gonna come up and do another layer going the whole way around. And as I'm doing this, I'm trying to get icing to stick out over the top of the cake. That way we can level it off. It just makes it easier to get a straight edge when you do this. Still making sure that my spatula is straight up and down. And now I just wanna get a little bit of icing on the top and spreading that all the way to the sides. 
I have folded paper towels here. What I want to do is take the bench scraper and I just want to put the bottom half in the hot water to heat this up and get the metal really hot. So sticking it in there for five to 10 seconds. When it comes out, use the paper towel, wipe all the water off. Now I have a hot piece of metal. Hold it straight up and down. Do not hold it on an angle. Don't hold it on an angle in. It's very important. You're gonna get straight sides if you hold it straight up and down. And I'm gonna get level with the cake and just start. I'm turning the, the turntable with my bottom hand and just holding this steady. Wipe off the excess, repeat the process. Dip it in the hot water, wipe it dry, and same thing, holding it against the cake. And I'm actually looking to make sure that all the icing is touching the bench scraper and that there's no gaps. You will be able to see some of the cake through this because this is basically just a crumb coat. Um, it's a little thicker than a crumb coat, but um, this is just the first coat of icing. I'm holding it straight up and down so my sides are going to be straight. It's more important with the top layer of icing, but you still want to make it as straight as possible. Now, as I said, you could still see cake through here and that is fine. Now, I have this Atiko spatula, it's offset spatula. I'll find it and link it below. I'm getting down on one knee so I am level with the cake. Dip this in the hot water, get the metal hot, wipe it off so it's dry. And I am just getting level with the cake and I'm gonna start pushing that top part of the icing back. It's not that important that you get it perfect now because we're gonna put another layer of icing on, but you wanna hold the spatula straight. If you hold it on an angle, your cake is not gonna be level. So you have to make that original top line and then use that line as a guide. So you want to start high and make sure, make sure if I started too low, I would have run into the top layer of this cake. So again, I'm putting this back half of the spatula, matching it up to the line I made before. I'm looking at it, making sure that the spatula is straight across and then I'm pushing it back and then I'll tilt it down a little and get the rest of the icing off. All right, so that's pretty level. It's not perfect. Now this cake, you know, I would never give someone a cake that looks like this. <laughs> this is just the first crumb coat. And well, what I'm gonna do now is put this back in the refrigerator and the icing is gonna solidify and then we're gonna put another coat on it. So the icing will solidify, you'll be able to see the bulges. And then when we put on the other coat, we are going to cover the bulges in the cake and learn how to ice a cake in a dark color and smooth it without messing it up. To make this recipe, you're going to need two and a half sticks of butter. This is salted butter. It is uh, 20 tablespoons or 10 ounces. And it is, I can make an indent with my finger, so it's not rock hard, but it's not super soft. One half cup of shortening. This is high ratio sweet tech shortening. It is, it will give you the best result. Um, I talk about different shortenings in another video and I will link that below two pounds of powdered sugar. This is just a two pound bag. It's 907 grams. My favorite flavoring, Wilton Clear Vanilla. I will find it and link it below. And also whatever coloring you're going to want to use. I'm using red. This Alan Tetriol, I don't think he makes this anymore, but I love Americolor or Chef Mate as well. And I will link that below. I'm going to start by adding two and a half sticks of butter to the bowl. And I'm gonna put this on about a six out of 10 for 30 seconds to mix it together. Then I'm gonna add the shortening. This is a half cup. I go between using a half cup and three quarters of a cup. In the warmer months, when, uh, when it's hotter out and I need my icing to be more stable, I'll use three quarters of a cup. But when it's cooler out, I find I don't need as much shortening, so I use a half cup. And I'm going to blend that with the butter for another 30 seconds on about a seven or eight out of 10. Now I'm gonna add between one and three teaspoons of the, the, of the vanilla. I just eyeball it. You can measure it out if you want. 
and then mix that for another 15 seconds on about a seven. Now, you're gonna need some liquid. I'm just using water. I haven't found the difference between using water and milk or cream or anything like that. You can absolutely use milk. I'm just using regular room temperature water. This is about a tablespoon, so I'm gonna add two tablespoons of liquid to the bottom of the bowl. Now, you're going to have to figure out how much liquid to add to this by, it's going to vary. It varies depending on the time of the year. Right now it's very dry. When it's dry out, I need to add more liquid. If it's hot and humid outside, I need about half as much or even less. So you really have to pay attention to the consistency of your icing. So you start by adding a little bit and then you can always add more if you need it. So now I have a towel on top of my mixer just to protect my kitchen from getting sugar everywhere. I have the two tablespoons of liquid on the bottom and I'm going to add the entire bag of uh, sugar to the bowl. And now I'm gonna cover the, the bowl with the towel so you won't be able to see and I'm gonna mix it on a low speed until it starts to come together. You'll be able to hear it. So I'm gonna lock it in place, turn it on stir and cover it. It'll be about 30 seconds or so. Now you can hear it come together and it's slowing down. So I'm gonna turn it up one more notch and then add two more tablespoons of liquid. And that's not enough, I need another tablespoon. It's still too thick. I'm gonna turn it up for about 10 seconds to about a seven. All right, now I'm gonna take it off and scrape the blade and scrape the sides and the bottom of the bowl. If you have a scraper blade, you can skip this step, but I don't love scraper blades. It's so difficult for me to explain consistencies in a video. <laughs> so I have to just try to show you. This is, there's a lot of resistance with my spatula. So I know that it needs another tablespoon of liquid, right? Now also, if you were dyeing the entire batch of icing, you would want to add the coloring to the to the butter and shortening mixture before we added the sugar. It makes it a little easier. Um, I, I totally forgot to say that, so I'm sorry about that. However, I'm only dyeing a little bit of this icing because I already crumb coated my cake in white, so I don't need as much. So I'm gonna make it white and then add the coloring and I'll show you what to do. And I'm gonna add another tablespoon of liquid and mix it on a medium speed, like five out of 10, for about 10 to 15 seconds. It's still difficult to get my spatula through, so I'm gonna add another tablespoon. I'm telling you, if I was making this video in July, I might add three tablespoons total, but I think this is six tablespoons of water. It's insane how different it is depending on the humidity in the air. So stirring that together and then turning it up again on about a six out of 10 for 15 seconds. much better. It's just so much easier to get my spatula through it, right? Easier to spread. That's what we want a good spreadable consistency and we may even add a little more. I'm making this video because I get so many people asking me how to do, how I do this, but I don't even know how to explain how much icing you will need for a cake. It is trial and error. So if you are just doing this for the first time, you have no idea how much icing you will need, just dye the entire batch and you can use the extra icing as filling for cakes. But I know I'm icing a five inch cake and I feel like this is not going to be of any help, but I, I don't even know how, how to explain this. So I already have a coating of icing on the cake that we did earlier. So to get another coating on a five inch cake, I'm taking a big scoop and I'll do another big scoop. So that's two <laughs> heaping spatulas of the icing that I'm putting in a bowl. And then I'm gonna scrape this bowl clean and put this with the rest of my white icing that I have. And now I wanna take this icing. So this is about two cups, I guess. And I'm going to dye this red. So, the reason I like to ice the cake in white and then put a thinner layer of the colored icing is because it does require a bit, a, a good amount of coloring to get it to a deep color. I know you can microwave it and do a microwave method where you ha where you heat the icing and you have to wait for it to cool and then and then add it to, and then mix it up again or whatever it is to get a deep color. I just don't have the time. <laughs> 
um, and I just find it easier to do it this way. So what I'm going to do, this is two cups of icing, I'm going to do about one, two, three squirts of the red and mix that on a, like five out of ten for about 20 seconds. I just want to scrape the sides and the bottom. And a lot of people worry about um, the icing, the coloring changing the taste. I haven't found that it changes the taste. Um, I'm doing about a tablespoon of the icing of the coloring in here. However, if you add tons of it, like <laughs> you know, a quarter cup, that would that would alter the taste. But in a smaller amount like this, I find that it's fine. Now, this is the important part. <laughs> so there are air bubbles in this icing. I I don't know how to completely get rid of air bubbles in a smaller batch of icing, so I rely on my smoothing method. I find that this is a good spreadable consistency, but I find that if I add a little bit more liquid to the bowl, that it helps with the air bubbles. It helps it make it easier to smooth them out. I will show you what I mean. So I'm not gonna do an entire tablespoon. I'm gonna do about half a tablespoon more of liquid and mix that together. Now, you can't add too much liquid. It, it, the, the butter and everything starts to separate, so you have to do a little bit at a time. Good, and that's all mixed together. Now, this looks like a lighter red. It will set as a darker red. And now, this is very easy to spread. There are air bubbles in it, but I am going to frost the cake with it and we will smooth all the air bubbles out. Now before I ice the real cake, I want to show you my technique um, using a dummy cake. The big question that I get is, does using a hot metal scraper against colored icing change the color of the icing? If you don't do it correctly, yes it does. I have found a technique that I do that really helps eliminate the color um, darkening which hap which can happen from the metal. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing, what I'm going to do because it's going to be a little difficult when I have the icing on it to explain it um, slowly because I don't want to mess up the icing. As you saw before earlier in the video, I take my bench scraper, I dip it in the hot water, heat up the, the metal, and then wipe it off so it's dry but it's hot. Now usually if I just have white icing, I put it right against, right against here and scrape. And we can't do that with the colored icing. So what I do is when I have the hot blade and it's kind of on, it's not flat against the cake like this. It's on a little bit of an angle. So basically just this part is touching the cake. I'm going to take the hot scraper blade and I'm, I'm going to start to turn the turntable with my other hand. And as I'm turning it, I'm bringing the blade closer, 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 not really touching, not really touching, not really touching. And then I start to touch it, you know, so it, I'm not just putting it against the cake right away. I'm gradually bringing it closer to the cake and then pushing it on as I have it um, touching the icing. I, I go gradual, gradual, not really touching, not really touching, a little more pressure, more pressure, and then doing it that way. I hope this is making sense. This is the only way that I know how to explain it, and that's the only way that I've found that this doesn't really make that much of a mark. There are still marks that happen. It, it happens. It's okay. You can cover it with decorations. However, I just wanted to show you the technique that I do before I actually do it on the cake. All right, now I'm going to put the other layer of colored icing on this cake. The icing on here is solid. It's been in the refrigerator overnight. Typically, I don't wait till overnight, but I was <laughs> doing a lot yesterday and I didn't get to this. So as you can see, you can see the bulges in this cake, right? This is why I like to do two layers. So you have a layer on, of icing on here where the bulges can show through. And now the second layer we're gonna put on will not have any bulges in it. So I have my red icing here. And after you mix it, if you just take your spatula and run through it, you can, you can get rid of some of the air bubbles. So I'm just kind of pushing the icing down. 
but it does still have air bubbles in it and we're gonna smooth them out. So I'm gonna do the same thing as I did earlier, getting some icing on my spatula. When I'm doing this, now that you have a colored icing on white, it's easier to see. You don't want a super thick layer, right? You can see this is about a quarter of an inch thick. So I wanna to try to get that thickness the whole way around. And as I'm spreading it on, I'm keeping my spatula attached to the icing. I don't wanna lift it off. So I'm gonna move over a little bit, press it down so there's no air bubbles that are forming and get it all the way down to the bottom of the board and I'm smoothing it back and forth. If you lift the spatula off, do it very gently and not just pull it off. So your icing must be, must have enough liquid in it. If it is too dry, it's not going to spread on and hold itself onto the cake. It must have enough liquid in here. And you can see air bubbles in this icing as we're spreading it on and that's okay, we're gonna get rid of them. Now that I did the bottom layer, I'm gonna come up and do the top layer. And like we did before, I want the icing to come over the top of the cake. I have a video where I go into full detail on how to ice cakes like this and I will link that below. So again, I'm trying to push the icing against the cake making sure that there are no air pockets are forming behind it. Now I just want to pull the icing over the top. So over here, it needs to come over the top. So I'm just putting a little more on here, just making sure that all the icing around the entire cake goes over the top of the cake. And now I'll fill in the center on the top. Just so you know, I have my, um, my really warm, hot water. It's not boiling. I have it over here and I'm gonna keep dipping this in, just this bottom part down here, getting that hot, wiping it off on the paper towel to get it dry, and then we're going to start. So you may not see that as I do that, but that's what I'm doing. I wanna work fast before this starts to crust. So I'm warming up my scraper blade wipe it dry. Now, like I said before, I'm starting to turn the bottom tier, move it closer, move it closer, move it closer, move it closer, add more pressure, more pressure, more pressure. And there we go. So I want to do that a couple times around the whole cake, removing the extra and same thing, dipping it in the hot water and start back a little bit, come closer, 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 and then start pushing it down. I can see that there's a little gap here, so I just want to add a little more icing here so it, it is even when I'm, when I'm scraping it. Again, dry blade, starting back a little bit where I was, and then coming closer, closer, closer. I want to hold this straight up and down, not on an angle, in or out. Closer, closer, and as I get closer, I'm adding more pressure. And one more time. You don't want to do this too much, now I'm adding the pressure. Good. So, can you see some little imperfections? Yes, if you get very close, you can. This is where the last one ended and we're gonna buff that out. You could see some darker parts here, but it's not that bad. Now, with this American buttercream, I use a Viva paper towel to smooth it. So what I like to do is get a paper towel off of the roll and then use my scissors to cut about three inches off just so it doesn't hang over the top. Viva Paper Patel doesn't, have, doesn't really have a pattern. However, it does have a slight pattern. One side is kind of wavy. This side you can kind of see like little dots if you look really close. I don't like that side. I like to use the, the side that has texture. It's easier to buff it out. So what I'm gonna do, you see this line here? I'm gonna put this up against the icing and gently press up and down. So I'm just using my fingers to start to buff out any of the air bubbles, any of the extra lines in here. And then peel it away. And you can see this line is starting to go away. If your icing is too wet, like right here, it was still a little wet, the paper towel starts to stick. 
So you, this is where it gets a little tricky because you have to have your icing a little more thinner than normal so you can get all the air bubbles out. However, if it's too thin and too liquidy, it's gonna stick to the paper towel. And I have to do this with my right hand. So again, just using my fingers going up and down, you see there's air bubbles in here and I'm trying to smooth them out. So I'm using light pressure, but I'm still pushing against the side of the cake with a little bit of pressure. You see how I'm starting to buff these, these air bubbles out? There will still be some in there. And if anyone has a better technique, please let me know. But this is the way that I found. There are still some air bubbles, but for the most part, you can't really see them after we finish. All right, now that I did that around the entire cake a few times, I'm gonna take my fondant smoother and put the paper towel up against the side of the cake. Hold the fondant smoother straight up and down. Again, you don't want it on an angle because then the cake is gonna come out towards the top and go in at the bottom. You want the sides to be straight up and down, so it's very important. I kind of get in and look at it and make sure that it's straight up and down. So what I'm doing right now is pressing. I'm giving it a little more pressure. I'm pressing it against the side of the cake and I'm pushing it in a little bit. So I'm not pressing super, super hard, but I'm giving it a little bit more pressure. I really hope I'm explaining this okay. As I'm smoothing this out, I can see a little bubble right here. So I can take a toothpick and just insert it in there, twist it as I pull it out. And then same thing, I can buff that hole and then press it with the fondant smoother. And there's a tiny hole here, which after this solidifies in the refrigerator, I can spackle that shut if I need to. Now, I'm going to, you're gonna see this off camera, but I'm gonna be doing the same thing with my spatula. I'm gonna be dipping it in the hot water to get the metal hot, wipe it off with my paper towel, and then I'm going to um, level off the cake. I am getting eye level. So you can see me, I'm down here, eye level with the cake because I want it to be straight. Getting the metal hot, wiping it off, and you wanna start high. Start at the very top of where this comes up, over the side, I'm holding this straight. It's not on an angle down, not on an angle up. That's why I'm eye level, hold this straight. And what I'm doing, I'm gonna push it back and then tilt this down. So I'm not just pushing it straight back. I'm gonna push it back and then tilt it down and lift up the icing. So pushing it straight back, then I'm tilting it down, pressing it down against the top and lift that off. I'm gonna wipe the excess on that bowl, repeat the process, get this hot, use the back half of my spatula on the line that I just created and the top half on the rest of it. Press it straight back, then push it down and lift up. Repeat that process the whole way around the cake. It's not gonna be perfect and we will refine it after the next step. If you do this right, when you come to meet where you first started, it should be pretty even. And you can see it peaks up just a little bit right here now what I want to do is just let this icing crust for, I don't know, about three to five minutes and then I will continue. You need to know that if in the hotter months when it is more humid, I need to let this sit for probably about 15 to 20 minutes before I continue smoothing it just because some condensation does start to form and I need to wait for that to evaporate. So if you are in a humid environment, you may need a little more time to let this set before you do the final smooth. All right, now we wanna do the final smoothing method with some paper. It's recommended to use butcher paper and just cut it up in um, uh, pieces uh, rather than using like a computer paper just because that has some chemicals in it. I, I can link some butcher paper in the description below. I know I'm ready to do this final smoothing process and my hands are clean, I just washed my hands where you can touch it lightly and it's not sticking to your thumb. You could feel that it has 
um, dried and crusted. I, I don't know if you can see this in the video. You can, if you get very close, you can see a little bit of that pattern that transferred from the Viva paper, paper towel. And what we're gonna do is smooth it out. So I'm putting paper against the side of the cake and same thing, hold this straight up and down, not on an angle. And I'm giving it some good pressure, not too much, but just enough to press this against the side of the cake so I can easily remove that pattern that the paper towel created. I don't wanna to press too hard because if this has crusted, then if you press too hard, you're gonna get cracks in the icing. So you just have to find Find your happy medium, like I always say. And you know what's crazy? I still see another bubble here. And I just wanna pop up here and just smooth this out. So those holes that I created with the toothpick, I will um, spackle them shut, like I said, after this has set in the refrigerator. So as I'm doing this, I'm paying attention to the top border too. So I want to try to make this as symmetrical as possible and not have like a flat side here, right? I'm trying to keep it round. And that looks pretty good. So now I'm going to do a final refining of that top edge. Getting low, what I like to do is spin it until I find the lowest point. And I feel like the lowest point is right here. So let's start there. Same thing, I'm gonna, ow, I just got hot water on my hands. Get the metal hot, wipe it off. Hold it perfectly straight. And now I'm just refining that top edge. So now when I don't have that extra icing, I can still push it back pretty much straight on instead of down and up trying to lift the other icing off. So same process, I am making the line, heating the spatula, using the back part on the line I just made and the front part on the next section, trying to keep it all straight. And now for the final smoothing on the top, what I like to do is I'm, I'm dipping this in the water and I'm getting a little bit of water on the tip of the spatula. It's not tons of water, it's just a little bit on here that I can spread on the top of the cake. If I just dump some water on the top and let it sit there, it's hot water, it's going to make a darker mark in here. So you have to work with it quickly and make sure that you don't put too much water on or else it'll drip down the side and drip down your cake and it will create a watermark down the side of your cake. I tell you not to do it because I've done it so many times and it's so annoying when it happens. <laughs> All right, so you have to work fast. I'm gonna show you how I do it. Drop it down and immediately start spreading. So if you look really close, you can see there is a, a little bit of a darker mark in the middle. Now, I smoothed out pretty much the middle up to the sides and now I want to dip this in here and I'm gonna tap it off and use the wetness and the heat to get level and I'm just gonna press back from the edges in. So I'm gonna keep dipping that in the water, making sure that I'm using some water to smooth out any imperfections in the icing. So I'm using my bottom hand to turn the turntable. I don't want to use too much water because I don't want to make water marks in the icing. Once I do that, once that's all finished, I do like to just take a paper again and lightly, I'm lightly pressing and I'm really refining this top edge, just making sure that it's round and doesn't have any weird flat edges. And here is the cake iced in that darker buttercream. As you can see, there is a seam here, right? You, it's not perfect. However, it's pretty good. As you can see, this icing has air bubbles all in it. But using this smoothing process, we were able to get it all out and uh, make it look nice and smooth and pretty. So I'm gonna stick this back in the refrigerator 
let the icing set and then I can patch these two holes and putting this back in the fridge for at least four hours for it to completely set. All right, and just to show you real quick how to patch these little holes here, this is just out of the refrigerator. The icing is solid, so I'm not gonna mess it up. I have some of the red icing in this container and I have a palette knife and what I'm gonna do just get a teeny, teeny bit on the palette knife and I can find the holes and just get a little icing on the holes. And then once the icing is on, just like wipe it off. And then this icing will set and it'll be the same color as the other icing. But that's how you spackle any holes that would be in your icing. So here you go. Here is the cake iced in the dark buttercream. Now, if you look really close, you can see some imperfection, imperfections. You can see a little line here where the icing kind of met when I, after I smoothed it. Um, I, I totally forgot to film patching these holes, so I'll do that after this. So you'll probably have already seen that in the video. <laughs> but for the most part, it is smooth. It is pretty uniform in color and there are really no air bubbles. If you look really close, you could be like, okay, there's some imperfections in here. We're gonna cover that with a border. We're gonna cover the imperfections with decorations. We're going to trick the eye into thinking that this is a perfect cake. And that's, that's really the, that's the name of the game when it comes to cake decorating, right? I wrote down notes because I had to prepare like Rachel Green. And I know I always use that reference, but Unagi, I wasn't prepared. And now I am <laughs> because I made notes. Couple things about this. So my smoothing technique is only going to work for American buttercream. American buttercream is the only buttercream that I use. I'd never use meringue buttercreams. I'm just so used to using American buttercream. I love the taste. I know how to work with it. And that's just what I stick with. I know that meringue buttercreams do not crust so you can't use the smoothing method that I use if you're using a meringue buttercream. Now with coloring the buttercream I know there's a microwave method I know you can uh, I really have never learned about it too much but I know that you have to microwave the icing and then let it cool and then re-whip it and all and I just ain't nobody got time for that remember that lady <laughs> I thought I had bronchitis. All right, anyway, but I, I don't have time for that. So that's why I do the method of doing the thicker crumb coat and then the thinner coating of the icing. I actually took a picture of what it looks like underneath and I'll put it here so you can see the thicker coat of white icing and then the thinner coating of the darker icing. And that wasn't this cake, it was a different cake, but I know I was gonna make this video so I took the picture. So this way you are not eating too much icing that has the coloring in it. And I know a, a lot of people ask if the coloring changes the taste of the icing. Too much coloring? Yes, it will. I find with these little squirts that I did, while whilst it is a lot of, of icing, it does not really change the taste. Uh, I have never found that the taste of the icing has been altered because of the amount of coloring that I use. Now. I will say, I always tell customers when they're requesting a darker color icing, I recommend covering it in fondant. That way they don't have to have any of the colored icing or the coloring in the icing. However, most people prefer to have the buttercream on the outside rather than have the cake wrapped in fondant. So that's why I do the thicker white icing and the thinner dark icing. Now also, it is very important to get the icing to the correct consistency. And that is something that I have a little bit of, dif of a difficulty showing you or telling you, relaying the information in the video of how it has to be. So you can't really pay attention to the amount of liquid I, that I add. I think I said this in the video because depending on the humidity, you're gonna need more or less. However, it needs to be a little thinner consistency than what you usually do. That way you can smooth all the air bubbles out. And please, if somebody else has a better way of getting air bubbles out of icing, I would love to know because I'm up for trying something else, but I have found that this works for me. So as you saw in the video, the icing had air bubbles in it, but it's all about how you put it on the cake and smooth all those bubbles out to get a uniform bubble free look on your cake. I have a video showing you how I ice cakes and I go into a little more detail than what I did here and I will link that in the description below as well. 
So I think that is it. If you guys have any other questions or comments, leave them below. And you can follow me on social media. And I have my website. Everything is in the description below as well. And if you want to stick around, you can watch these two videos next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.